Let me ask you a question. Have you seen these thumbnails? No? Well, you at least thought it's probably some big YouTuber. No, that's just my friend. And those videos don't even exist. But I made you think it's some kind of big YouTuber. Didn't I? That's because how those thumbnails are built. To grab your attention and to grab your attention. In this video, we're gonna be creating this thumbnail. And don't worry, it's not as hard as it looks. <sighs> Wait, what was I about to say? Oh yeah. Stick around because by the end of this video, you will know everything you need to know to create thumbnails that grab attention, get clicks and grab attention. Oh, and did you know that 90% of people who watch my videos aren't even subscribed? Guys, come on. By the way, all the tips I'm about to share with you are universal and you can use them for any style of thumbnail. So let's get started. Welcome ladies and gentlemen in the Photoshop and um, let's begin creating this thumbnail and I'll be going over the whole process and giving you guys some tips. So the fake video idea, uh, let's just imagine if I were to film a review about mobile games. Uh, let's go over the pictures that I gathered. So first is background. It's not very important. I just picked something I just aesthetically like. Then we have a picture of myself obviously <laughs> a picture of my hand with my phone already cut out because i don't want to go over that process twice today uh next we have some review stars so these are the overlays of some reviews we'll we'll see which one works better just a plain screenshot of subway surf video game because it's a mobile game and the video is about mobile games. Well, reviewing them to be exact. So let's begin. I usually begin with cutting everything out just so I could have everything ready for me. So the only thing that needs to be cut out is myself. First of all, use pencil 90% of the time. Ah, uh, you know, object selection tool is cool, but if you want to clean edges and detailed cut out most of the time, just use pencil. It's a bit time consuming, I know, but the overall result worth it. Just go around the object. Whenever I'm finished with the path, I right click, make a selection, new selection. I don't do no feather, radius, nothing. Just leave it at that, click OK. There we go, I am cut out. Now, to deal with this messy hair, situation i'm gonna double click on the layer mask and i will select this refine edge brush tool which is very helpful very useful for hair and some furry stuff and i just click and go around the edges just like this and there we go for most thumbnails this would be perfect selection and you won't have to do any adjustments after this to the mask so once everything is cut out Let's go over to background. I usually start with background. After I cut everything out, I usually start with background. For me, most of the time, background is something that's just there, just to give your image uh, some dimension, if you know what I mean. Details of the background aren't really that important. So what I do, I create a curves adjustment layer uh, and clip it to the background layer. If you don't know how to do it, I'm holding Alt and then hovering my mouse between the curves adjustment layer and the background layer. Uh, I'll double click on the icon here and I'll pull this slider up here. Really just use your eyes because most of the time you just do everything by, by eye. I pull the shadows all the way up and the highlight I pull them down just a tiny Bit. So yeah, as you can see, background is just there. You usually want to have the most important subjects of the thumbnail of the video, whatever it is, very big because thumbnails are small. So you need to compensate that. For this thumbnail, I would say something like this is pretty good. Before doing any adjustments though, I would take all of my objects and just try and put them in place before adjusting anything. Something like this, I think should work perfectly. Then with reviews and review videos, uh, what I usually see are those very nice and round square boxes. So how to create it, I will show you right now. It's another tip for you. 
we go to rectangle tool and in this tool we will have to we will click the stroke click this just so we don't have the stroke we can choose the color but we can change it later so it doesn't really matter and here is where the magic happens rounded corners you set the pixels right here so i usually do between 60 and 100 depends on what type of box i want but let's go with 60 and see how it looks so what i'm gonna do is just click and drag and as you can see it starts with some circle but then gradually goes to this little box and i think that's pretty good if we want to adjust anything we can by first selecting the layer of the rectangle going to properties and here we will find the corner radius settings we can also adjust every single corner separately i'll put that on let's say 50 for this one let's say 50 why not right here we have our box so let's put it in center just so it's easier for me to work with and also if you don't like the shape or the the width or height of the box you can just click ctrl t and then adjust it here since we have a pretty bright background, we do have to have a drop shadow for the box itself. So it stands out a little more. So we go to layer styles and we add the drop shadow layer style. We can adjust it later. Let's set the distance, put the shadow a little down, make it just a tiny bit bigger, maybe put it even lower like so. Let's make the little box with the review. Let's create First, another box with the same rectangle tool. This should be good enough, I think. Something like this, I think, should work pretty nicely. Why did I create this rectangle? Is because I wanted to put my Subway Surfer in it. So what we're gonna do is just clip it to this black rent rectangle we just created. And there we go. As you can see, if I make any adjustments, it's gonna show only inside of this little box this is very very useful if you want to put an image uh, and give it this image a shape now let's do the reviews let's give it a five stars because why not because why not and just putting it inside our box keeping in mind that all the major details should be pretty large on the thumbnail yeah we can just go ahead and align it with the box that is inside and there we go we have a space right here below the stars for our short little review and for the icon so let's create an icon select an eclipse tool i will create a circle for the icon there we go let's put the color to something light bluish maybe pretty nice then i can just go ahead and duplicate it make it darker of course yeah, this should be good somewhere right here. And for the body of our icon, I can just do that. And there we go. We have an icon and that looks pretty good to me. So let's convert it to smart object. I will play around with it. I'm not sure where I want it, either here or in the center right here. If you guys do end up adding text to your thumbnail, make sure that the text is very short and easy to read. Since we have a white background, and this whole box is pretty large. Uh, that is good because the text will be visible and it will look very, very nicely. So let's uh, type in a review. Since it is a Subway Surfer, uh, let's say very addictive. Now looking at it, I don't think having this much space between the elements is good. So the Google text uh, or review or any sort of website we don't use full black and full white we don't really want to use that we can get away with the box being all white but the text let's not put it on all black let's just make it a little bit brighter just a little bit so there we go we have our nice nice box right here with the review we can go ahead and turn on layers of myself thumbnails like this with more simple thumbnails where you don't do much editing to the face we want every side of the face to be lit very nicely. As you can see, I have this light source that lights this side of my face. And then I had another light source coming from the back to light up this side of the face. So it looks very, very nice and very professional, which is very important. 
if we do a thumbnail. <laughs> so let's first of all, if you're wearing any white type of clothes or black or any other color, usually we want every color to be the exact color, if you know what I mean. So if it is a white shirt, as you can see, it's a little orangey, yellowish in some areas. We don't want that. We want it purely white. And if it was black, I would do the same thing. We would see some blues, or we would see some magentas in there. It's just some unnecessary colors that we don't need. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer, as you can see right here. I'm putting the saturation all the way down and clipping it to the layer of myself. And with a hard brush, I can just go ahead and remove all the colors from my white t-shirt there we go as you can see huge difference sometimes we want different colors for our clothes to balance our thumbnail again it's all about the balance to balance our thumbnail with the colors as well so as you can see primary color here right now is red of our stars it pulls most of the attention right here so we kind of want to balance it so what we can do is go to our hue and saturation adjustment layer and since we already have a mask we can utilize it we can click colorize and we can colorize to blue for example which is very nice and it contrasts very nicely with the red so yeah we can change the colors to any color we want uh, red also works orange works as well here's a little tip for y'all for the colors there is a website called colors.dopely.top and this is a very 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 useful website if you don't know what colors to use if you're new this is very helpful even i sometimes find myself using this website it is very useful it's very nice it's not sponsored it's it's a very good website which i personally use a lot so here we can see what color will work best with with this red and it gave us a second color we go to our hue and saturation one eight two now this does not look good and why is that is because we do also need to take into consideration of our background of our environment so here's another tip for you we can put a black and white adjustment layer on top of everything and see no colors and what this does it helps us not think about colors and balance our image with the light. So this is very important. Colors are important, but the balance of light is, I would say, higher on the tier list. So as you can see, it blends with background and it just doesn't stand out. But if we put it on darker blue, as you can see, now it contrasts with background very nicely. And when we turn on the colors back, as you can see, it gives us a nice contrast. So this is a very helpful thing that you have to keep in mind when you are working with colors. So this website is great, but sometimes there are some other variables that you have to consider. Now let's finally, let's finally do the face. First of all, we can go ahead, take our hard brush, put it on white, create another layer, clip it to our face and just draw around the eye. Once we kind of selected our eyes, we can put this onto a color blending mode and as you can see it makes our our eyes white and what i also like to do is as you can see it's it's a bit flat it's a bit dark so what i do is i copy the same the same layer i put it on normal i take my eraser tool put it on soft brush and i erase the edges and leave all this lightness closer to the center of my eye now my eyes stand out they don't look too weird and if we zoom out as you can see before and after yeah that does a lot that does a lot and i love it let's move on to dodge and burning i added an exposure adjustment layer i clip it to my subject layer put gamma correction a bit higher then i invert the mask with Control i and now this is gonna look pretty weird at first but bear with me take my salt brush and i outline the features of my face so for example nose under my eyes like this there we go something like this what i do next is double click on the layer mask and then with feather until i don't see the hard edges and i just see the shape 
coming together. Then I do the same thing with exposure. I go into the layer mask and let's see before and after. And as you can see, it is a subtle, subtle change, but my face is, is less flat. It's nice and rich. So there we go. This is a very useful tip for you guys. I use that all the time. Now the hair, I usually adjust the colors of my hair because um, I don't know, I don't usually like how my hair look on camera. Let's try and fix that. I just put saturation and lightness down and I go around my hair. I'm done in under 10 seconds. We can put the fill down a little bit and there we go. I just like to make my hair a little darker. Now the final thing that I want to do for this thumbnail is to draw a little bit of light and what I would love to tell you guys for the light to make your pictures look very sharp and very high quality even if you shot it on your phone or whatever. What we do is create empty layer, put it on screen, take our soft brush and we make it very very small and what we do we go around the edges but not all edges just some for example our clothes and when i zoom out as you can see a little effect that makes our image very very sharp and there we go this is pretty good guys i had a blast making this video this is very fun and let me know in the comments if you learned anything and if those tips were helpful thank you guys for watching this video i hope you guys found this video helpful follow me on instagram like this video subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll see you in the next video see ya